Mm-hmm. And, and technically, we don't own, quote unquote, anything digital. We just own <sighs> the rights to play it while it's <laughs> available. <laughs> Spec Ops The Line got pulls from online stores. Mm-hmm. So you can't play this game unless you happen to have a physical version of it. Like you're saying, there's games now where, well, that one, at least you could, if, if you happen to find a physical version of it, you can pop it into a 360 or pop it into an Xbox and play it. You can still just play it that way. There's games being made now where you won't be able to do that. Hello and welcome to level 120 120. of the Thoughts and Players podcast. The gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? What up? How is it going? How is your evening? It's been all right. I'm a little tired. So don't mind the yawns. I'm not bored. I'm just sleepy. Mm, How about you? I, I'm always good for a nap. I'm always good to rattle off a couple hours of sleep. Even if I just woke up. You said, hey, I know you just woke up an hour ago. You want to sleep for a couple hours? Yeah, I'm good for it. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. Like, I hate taking naps, but I also love taking naps. Yeah. Well, at some point, and I don't know when, it, you were younger, you would take a nap. It would be 30 minutes. You would wake up. And you go about your day. You get some point where you're taking at an age where you're taking a nap. You're thinking, okay, this is going to be like every other nap I've taken, which 30 minutes. I wake up and I'm good. I take a nap at one o'clock in the afternoon. I wake up. It's 630 and I'm trying to figure out what happened. Yep. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a mood and a mode of distress. I don't know what happened. I feel like the war, something, something pivotal has happened in the world <laughs> that I, that I like wasn't I aware of the five hours. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's, you know, you're like trying to figure out things. It, you, you bring up a good point about being young and taking naps and being older and taking naps. Mm-hmm. You know what the other two things that you did as kids that you do now that isn't bad necessarily? Mm. It might not be everybody, but maybe most people. Mm. What's that? Spank, spankings and being called a butt muncher. Mm. Those, those both they, have they, they different... used to be horrible. But now, you know, they're not too bad. For for very specific individuals, those <laughs> things are absolutely <laughs> the bee's knees now as an adult compared bee's to being knees. a child. It's the bee's knees, okay? I, I, look, I love my 1940s to 1960s vernacular. I love it. Um, yeah. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, welcome to this level of the pod. We've got a couple of interesting topics, as always, to get into. But before we do that, we're going to start it off with what we always started off with, and that's the games we're playing. Um, Now, I can start off with this because I think it's going to throw everyone for a loop. Oh, I'm ready for a loop. Okay, well, here's the loop for what I've been playing. I've been um, extremely busy. Haven't had time to sit down and play a console. So, um, what I have been playing is mobile, and I've mm-hmm. just, I've just, I've just been playing some Words of Wonders. I don't know if people know what that is. It's kind of I like don't. a weird, like guessing. You know, you give like it's 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 a word puzzle game essentially, right? So you're having to guess these different, you know, words and puzzles and put them together. They give you a certain scramble of words and you have to kind of find other words that can be out of those root those root letters. So I've been doing that. It's kind of interesting, right? I mean, obviously it's a mobile game, it's whatever whatever, but like each stage is like different places in the world. So like the first stage is in Egypt and the um second stage is in France and the third stage is in Chile and and like each they give you different like wonders in each of these areas that you actually learn about as you complete a certain amount of puzzles and and get to the the next chapter or the next location so that's like a really interesting cool little nugget really there cool. yeah but um like that's really all I've kind of had the the time to play there's other games i want to jump into i obviously want to keep up and continue with mafia 3 i want right. to i want to get back to big ambitions and again i've got Frostpunk 2 on the docket as well as me thinking i want to there. finally pull the trigger on uh on armored core i've been talking about it for months i've just got to get through these things get get a couple more games out the way 
get myself set up right, and then I'm on my way. But yeah. this 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 past week, your boy been busy. Your boy had no time. So it's been mobile games. It's been that, and um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think. It's been that and a little bit of. I think it's called Last War Survival. I don't plan on playing that long. That's an obviously gimmicky game. I don't know if you yeah. probably you, you know, you've seen the ads and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's about as long as I'm going to play it for. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm going to be out of there. But that's pretty much it. I haven't been able to play any console, any PC. Really, it's just been one word puzzle mobile game. It's it's, it's quite embarrassing, actually. I'm, I'm a bit ashamed of it, but hey, it is what it is, you know. Hey, I mean, at least you're getting something in there, you know. Being an yeah. adult and all these responsibilities and every like. It's a bummer. Sometimes you don't have time for yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, we got the usual. We got the TFT, we got the finals, and we got the Apex. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, uh, when's the next... Either when is the next or how long ago did the current season of Apex either start or end? It's in the second half right now. They split it. It, like, okay. I don't like it because now it's two different battle passes for the same season. Hmm. They're spreading their well, money because now yep. you have to buy both battle passes for one yep. season. Mm hmm. Okay. That's annoying. But it used to just split like the uh, competitive mode halfway through the season, it would reset and you'd go back down, you know, six ranks. So if you were plat four, you'd be gold two, you know? <laughs> Mm, okay. So they they do that and they restart the battle pass and uh, mm. it's annoying. I don't like it. You know, when you can't spell greed without without an e and an a. That's very true. So true. You can't. I mean, you can. It's just I just you know. Just, yeah. I like it. I went with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But uh, the finales they're started relatively recent as well. But I I don't keep up with the finals as much like i don't know the like the lore or what like whatever i mm -hmm. just go in play competitive whatever mode that is and that's it yeah so i don't pay attention to the battle pass or anything i'm like i'm not getting sucked in i'm not buying credits i'm not looking cool like all my characters are still default yeah and i have like 15 20 hours in it i'm keeping to it ain't losing money on that one right yeah, I feel you. That's that's what I've been playing. Okay, okay. So you know, keeping it keeping it together. You know, it's like we were saying before the the finals is in a confidently, though probably temporary third wheel yes. in that rotation. Yeah, right? I think as soon as as long as it's a decent game, mm -hmm. Marvel Rival comes out. I think I'm. I think that's it. You think that's going to take it? You're thinking that's yeah. That's going to knock it out. Yeah. Yeah, well, for the final sake, they better hope that they screw the pooch. And Marvel's been a little inconsistent recently, so who knows what it'll end up being. But yeah, that's for the, the problem, they better hope because if, if Marvel's if they if they get it, they get it any kind of right, finals you're out of there, man. It looks sounds like. Yeah, it, it it's more of a itch to play something that's not Apex, but it kind of is. Yeah. I feel like you're saying enough of a switch up where it's it's different enough, but still familiar. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. It doesn't mess up the groove of what you're used to playing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel you. All righty. Well, sounds like what we're playing is out of the way. Jumping on to the topics. You want to take us away with uh, with yours first? We could do that. We could do that. All right. Okay. So I saw this headline today and read the beginning of the article and it was about the xbox 360 store is yes. closed yes. right that article is from two months ago i don't know why google's showing it to me now why did hey. it not show me the day it came out like every other article yeah but i digress and it got that got me thinking so the article said 220 games were lost Mm. With that. So now you can't buy those games anymore. They were just on the store. Gone. Mm -hmm. Back then, when it first came out, which I said, you know, 2005, almost every game was physical and most of it didn't rely on online. 
mm-hmm. you know, but nowadays there's even single players where you have to be connected to the internet in order yep. to play it, which is absurd. It so is. I was thinking like in, in 20 years time, where is the video game industry going to be? Are we even going to own anything? Because there's digital only uh, consoles and stuff already. Right. Almost almost nobody puts a CD drive in their computers anymore. Right. You know? Um, and, and technically, we don't own, quote unquote, anything digital. We just own uh, the rights to uh, play it while it's uh, uh, available. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be as part of a final thought, but it kind of lends a little bit into ooh, that. Oh, I like that. Um, oh, oh, what you're saying, yeah, um, yeah, that's so. It kind of touches on something I've explored a little bit more, bef- a little bit before about like we talk about like game history and game preservation. So, like yeah. one of the a previous final thought that I had, however, however many episodes ago, um, was the fact that um, Spec Ops: The Line got pulled from online stores. Mm-hmm. So you can't play this game unless you happen to have a physical version of it. Um, like you're saying, there's games now where, well, that one at least you could, if if you happen to find a physical version of it, you can pop it into a 360 or pop it into an Xbox and play it. You can still just play it that way. There's games being made now where you won't be able to do that, and there there are there's tons that are like. Yeah. I mean, with some games, you can't even do that now. I think I'm thinking about like, so for instance, I gave the example of like trying to play Diablo 4 a little while ago, and I could not play it until I signed up for Battle.net. So it was like, that's already, and that's with it, like, it still is being accessible. It's already locked behind something, right? Right. Because kind of like what you're alluding to, and again, it's it's, it's part of a final thought, but I can expand on that later too, with um, with the idea that we don't really own the game. We own licenses to the game. That's what we right. own, right? Um, so yeah, in twenty years, what does it look like? I think it. I mean, I think it just it demonstrably looks worse because yeah, that's no one it's just ugh. no one else. The the companies that make the games seem to not seem to could not care less about preserving the game, which is a really interesting game. Really interesting thing in regards to like the public was my mind. Yeah. It's like you spend tens to hundreds of millions of dollars of developing these things. And you do not really care about preserving it unto the point of it no longer making money for you. Like, yeah, Rockstar is a hundred percent great about, uh, about, uh, you know, uh, preserving GTA five. That's because it prints it prints the the currently the entire economic production of a country for them, right? But as soon as it starts and doesn't do that, it gets shelved, it gets pulled off. Who knows what that looks like, right? right? So twenty years from now, that may not be accessible. I'm thinking about a game like um, God. For let's see, let's for instance, we've talked before about Xbox and their weird stance and how they could possibly be going the way of Sega or something like that. Think about a game that's completely digital. Hellblade, Sunua Saga, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What happens if that gets pulled off servers for, for availability? Is that game just... That game was not sold physically anywhere, right? It's just gone. It's just gone. And that's that's it. Yes. You know, like... I don't know. I don't know for sure, like, up to what console, but, like, at least, you know, the 360 and the PS3, right? Mm -hmm. Every game had a physical copy. Every game pretty much had a story mode or a local play mode, you know, stuff like that. Didn't really focus on multiplayer. Yeah. And you can go back and play those games. You know, every you know, there's tons of people with collections out there. Like I still have my Sega and all my Sega games. Mm -hmm. So I can go right now, hook it up, play it and not have any issues. Yes. But in 20 years, when I go to, hook up my xbox one what do i have what do i have well you're never going to hook up your xbox one 20 years from now but i get what you're saying right i mean you know, that's, yeah, that's the last stuff is online uh, yeah. all the, like all it needs an update you can't play it and yeah. it's not available anymore right that that's yeah that yeah. sucks it, yeah great example like you said like your sega like example like i when i, I you know my birthday thing we had a little sega station set up right we had a sega yeah, dreamcast which was there awesome Sega Dreamcast, you could play what Take Crazy Taxi and 
uh, ready to rumble in the NFL 2K1 or 2K or something like that. You just pop the games in and you played them. That's it. That's all she wrote, right? Um, for me, in the case of, let's go back to the example of like Spec Ops Align. I bought Spec Ops Align, fortunately, on GOG. So GOG, one of GOG's big things, it doesn't have any DRM tied to their games. You buy the games, you own the games. You own the files. So luckily for me, I can still play that game, right? As long as I have GOG installed on my um, on my computer, or at least, or at least I just have the install files for it somewhere, I can still play that game. But there's going to be a lot of games where you're not going to be able to do that, um, yeah. and it's going to increasingly be so because a lot of these places, publishers, they just don't care about preserving the games. They're going to pull the games offline, and it doesn't. And this, this is a thing of. Here's an example. Um, a brand new game that you won't be able to play anymore, Concord, right? Because it was a disaster and Sony pulled it. Got rid of the servers. You can't play that game anymore. That game's not going to be available. Not that you will want to play it. A but snap. It's, it's, everything, everything, can, it, everything will just progressively get Thanos. Or what will happen is, is that they'll go, um, they'll, which again, you still lose games, but they go the Nintendo route. So in in regards to like, Hey, Nintendo, every new gen, they're going to update their technology and their offering online. And the old online store is going to get deprecated and go away. And they'll come up with a new online store that you have to go through in order to buy games. Right. So that's why Nintendo has been able to what can resell digital versions of Pokemon Red over and over and over again. Because yeah, you yeah. bought it for you bought it for the Wii, kick rocks. The Wii U store is different. You bought it for the Wii U, kick rocks. The Nintendo Switch store is different, right? It's going to keep doing it that way. So that's another way you can get it. But then again, think about all those games that don't get that treatment. That's where you lose them. Yep. The games where Nintendo says, hmm, we don't really think we don't really think this is an IP we want to invest in anymore. So therefore, you don't get any online, you know, versions of a of an F-Zero you can buy and play, right? Because we don't believe the IP is worth putting out there. We don't believe there's much demand to go through and get the code and reintroduce and all the other stuff, right? Um, and just and, and and that's that's on big games that had those chances. When we think about a lot of games, and especially now. It's, and it's really good to think about because of how big indie gaming is. How many of these indie studios do we expect to be around 15, 20 years from now? And when they exactly. and when they lose IPs, they go away, right? Um, like I, I mentioned one of my I mentioned one of my favorite games ever was Metal Fatigue. There was a point that I had the old disc that didn't work on the new on the new systems, right? And there was no way to get the game to play. So I was just, it just fortunate happenstance that someone bought the IP, recoded it, and published it to Steam so I could buy and play it. Else I would never be able to buy and play that game. I would have a disc of it that, would, that I could say, this game exists, but I can't access and play it anymore, right? Um, exactly. That could be another game that's just lost to history, even though you have the physical mechanisms to play it. So... I think it just gets incredibly worse 15, 20 years from now. And I don't know, you know, I don't really, unless there's like a really strong change in the way we look at preserving games, I think it's just going to get worse and we're going to get doomed. We're going to get, we're just going to, it's just going to, it's going to be terrible. It's just going to be really bad. It's yeah, I agree because like, you know, say for example, Blizzard, right. And you know, they're not bought by Microsoft or whatever. Mm -hmm. Blizzard goes out of business where do their servers go? You know, does somebody right. buy the game servers so people can continue playing? Or do you just lose a whole list of video games that thousands and thousands of people just aren't going to be able to play anymore? Right. You know, like back in the day, I feel old saying that when a company went out of business, their games were still for sale and playable. Mm -hmm. You know, third party market, whatever, GameStop, what have you. EB yeah. games. If the physical if the physical games were out there and available, even if the company went out of business, like you said, you could buy them. If they were out there, you could buy them. You could just grab them. And you could play them. You know what I'm saying? It's not just it's not just a matter of like being able to possess them, but also have them function in a way of which you can enjoy them. Yeah. So yeah, if everything's online, digital, more and more stuff being digital, like you said, Xbox goes under. Where does where does you know Hellblade go? Now, someone will say, like, well, 
ideally someone's going to come along and snatch up IPs that are valuable. You know, in something like a Hellblade would probably be saved or be available to be played. But the idea is that, okay, that may be spared, but there's 10, 12, 15, 20, 50 games that are in a similar, that could be in a similar situation like that, that people with MBAs and entrepreneurs and hashtag influencerpreneur or whoever, whatever else, they're going to say, this doesn't, this isn't worth uh, a financial investment in. And um, though games and products and all are business, they're also art. And, and the idea that art can be lost due to something not being a viable business decision and those things not being considered in the creation of it is something that I feel like we need to have more, we need to be more proactive in trying to avoid, you know? Yeah. Um, but yes, I mean, I mean, short answer to what you're, to, to, to your question and what you're thinking. Um, yes, it will be, it, uh, it will be a hellscape of games disappearing and never coming back and we will just lose them. And so just got to enjoy them while we can. <laughs> right. Essentially. Right? Yeah. Between adult responsibilities and going to work yeah. and, you know, chores around that, like. We barely have time. You you didn't even play any games this week besides that mobile game. Right. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a week of whatever game is going to not be able to be played in 10 years that you can't get back. Right. Yes, exactly. I mean, I think about, and again, like, I'm, I'm thinking about all these indie games. So for, so, for instance, I bought it on Steam. It's one of my favorite games. It may crack my top 100. There may be a point where if this game goes out of business or they have to pull it and it's not accessible, I will never be able to play Wildermyth ever again. That's a possibility. That's a remote possibility, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's why game preservation as a general topic is so important. And the thing to think about is because you can try to preserve these games so that way you can at least have them to enjoy and have them to experience years and years and years on from now and it's accessible and available to everyone in some way it's maybe not accessible in regards to like you know everyone can you know like like you know it just it's just available for everyone for free to access or whatever but it, it's available for everyone to pay and enjoy if they want and it goes towards supporting something even if that's just a preservation of more video games you know right yeah but i i don't think i have anything else to say about it do you no, I don't think so. Very good topic, though. Yeah, it's a it's a sad topic. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's it's the reality of things. We're we're trying to we got to fight again. You got to bring it up and make it a point of discussion. Hopefully, you can begin to change things around because these people that freaking are in right. C suites don't care at all. Um, but my topic then we're talking about games we're playing. We're talking about games that. We want to make sure we have access to play in the future, especially if we enjoy them. Um, this was a really interesting topic and question that uh, my cousin, Big Beard Josh, came up with. And I was like, yeah, you know what? This is a good topic. I actually want to think about that. So we've talked before about not too long ago. It might have been not last level, but the level before that. Maybe games we were glad we gave a second chance. And we talked again about other games that were like, hey, Games that this was an absolute dumpster fire when we played it. What the heck is this even happening? Um, a question he had is, well, what are some games that had they hit the mark, they would be your either favorite game or game you would be playing every day? Right. So okay. it's 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 a little different. It's kind of like it's not so much as a failure, but it's not so much as a success. It's a near like a near perfect hit what is that near perfect hit but because it didn't quite hit the mark it's not in that everyday rotation or it's not it's not a favorite game it may just be a you know a, a very well liked game or something like that you know yeah. um so that i mean one game i can i can start because one game jumped out immediately in my mind okay if this game had hit the mark it would be a game it would be in my rotation my my ordinary rotation that game i don't think it's a surprise but it is starfield okay starfield yeah, you were so excited and so, so excited i took time off work to play it i took time off work to play it i told someone else about it and i was like yeah i took time off to play it you know thinking it would be great and they're like yeah how did that work out and i'm like well 
you know, at least I had the time off. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like that. That's 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 the silver lining with it. Right. But um, that game is has most of what I would want or need in a game to fit my thing. It's an RPG. Got it. It's space exploration. Got it. It's Bethesda. Got it. Right. It's 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 got all these things that would that would fit in the, in in my you know it's 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 open world it's really big there's all this customization and base building and ship building you can do it hits a lot of things on the nose for me um but then it's an it's at near it's a miss and why is it a miss well unfortunately one of the things that i thought would be a thing that drew me to it is one thing that i think that made it a miss and that's bethesda okay <laughs> there 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 yeah. was a fear going even from fallout 76 and you know, and, and Fallout 4 even a little bit, that Bethesda's game design is starting to feel a little antiquated, a little messy. And Starfield, I think, really kind of put that in spotlight in regards to it being antiquated. Everyone's kind of said, you know, again, whether you liked it or not, The Witcher 3 put one of the biggest shifts in gaming in regards to how you approach RPGs and how you make that uh, connect with and that whole game mechanic work with the player. It just it can't it can't be this old stuffy. It has to be dynamic and fluent. And you see games like Horizon Zero Dawn, which is, whether you played it or loved it or not, um, you, you've seen you know uh, games. I mean, like Cyberpunk, though it had its 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 bones, its its bad things from a technical standpoint, from a from a flow and, and game mechanic standpoint, it's it's newer. It has that it has that 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 newness to it. And Starfield came right. and just had this antiquated old feeling and they haven't really evolved it um and it's like man like this is a real miss because it was an opportunity for this like this was, was supposed to be this was supposed to be quote unquote elder scrolls or fallout in some way not exactly those but this was supposed to be something that i could lose hours and hours and hours into that i had planned on losing hours and hours into right. and even then like i i gave up on that game really early I still got 60 hours in it and I gave up on that game early and I've still got 60 plus hours. That, in that's it. crazy. 60 yeah. hours early. Yeah. Is insane. So it's like, man, that was a miss because that, that was one that I planned on from last. I, if you asked me last year, how long do you think you'll be playing this? I would in my mind have still be playing it right now. Like it would have been right. for sure. Yeah. Like, a year thing of me of me regularly playing that game in some way, shape, or form, and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't touched it. Yeah, it's upsetting. Yeah, you know how how do you go, you know, three for three of what you're looking for and still miss the mark? Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like it's easier than you would assume. Yep. Yep. Uh, for me, this is my technical one, right? I think it kind of fits it. But I also did play it quite a bit. I have 60 days played. So that's 1,400 hours. Mm -hmm. But uh, the original Modern Warfare 2. Okay. Okay. I, I loved that game. And like years later, like Xbox One was out for a while. Mm -hmm. I went and I went to see if anybody, if I could find a match. And I still could. Right. So that is probably six or seven years that game was out and people were still playing it. I only put 60 days played. I could have definitely put another 60 easily. But the uh, the big thing of the game was messed up. You couldn't get the spinning 10th prestige emblem without hacking the game because that prestige spinning emblem was after you get like all the gold items and all mm -hmm. the like challenges complete and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was just to show like, Hey, I completed everything on multiplayer, but no, everyone that, you know, got into a hacked lobby, had it and all this and that. And it was just, it was annoying. It was a, there, there wasn't anything to work for. And there was, there were yeah. so many titles, so many challenges to complete. Like there was kill street challenges. And I still have, I have one that's not completed. It was Stealth Bomber Kills. Those things are hard, all right? Mm -hmm. But, like, there's... The thing you wanted to work for was inaccessible. So it kind of mm -hmm. dropped. So, like, when Black Ops came out, 
I was at the midnight release and I started playing that one a lot. I go back to Modern Warfare 2 a little bit when I got tired of it. But essentially, I left Modern Warfare 2 in the dust. Yeah. Way before I I could have. Yeah. So that's I mean, that's my technical one. Yeah. Again, it's it's like a thing where it's um hey, you know, it, it's it's you, you got some play out of it, but again, it didn't just you know there's the potential of basically compared to like how much time you put in three and then like other games afterwards where you're like there definitely was a potential for this to be much more of a game that I was like really, really deep into, even if I was deep into it to a certain extent, right? You know, right? Yeah. Hey, you know, it's these. It, it's good because it's again, like why I kind of like this is because we're not saying these games are bad. I mean, for the, I'm not saying Starfield's good either, but I also I'm not saying it's bad, right? But we're not saying these right. games are really bad. We're just saying they just didn't just didn't quite hit the mark. Exactly. Um, another game that, if you look at it, this is the perfect game for me. It's the perfect game. Um, this game is a gangster mobster game. It has, um, things like empire or business building in it, mechanics, right? It has, uh, tactics as far as fighting and combat. And for some reason, it just didn't hit the mark for me. I'm even going to try it again just to see if maybe it was just, just the wrong time. You know, maybe there was a Stardew effect that kind of happened there, but empire of sin, was another game oh, okay. that I was really excited for because I, I, you know, I've back in the day, I played all those like strategic gangster games, like gangsters, organized crime and uh, gangsters Two and mob rule. And, and um, con- I think it's like constructor or something like that. Um, uh, you know, pizza connection and all these like different kind of games that had organized crime attached to it from a strategic standpoint. That's it right there. It, it's given me the tactics of something like an XCOM, right? I've really gotten into tactics right. games lately. The last game that I beat was essentially a tactics RPG, right? Gotten really into tactics. I love the idea of, like, you know, getting businesses and building them up, building speakeasies, maximizing profit, all those other things like that, right? Becoming a becoming a, a, a mob boss. But for some reason, I, for some reason, I just couldn't get with it. Um, and I played it to a point where I maybe have put maybe around 10 hours into it, but I just really couldn't get in. It was almost there. It was almost, I could feel it. And, um, mm-hmm. but again, since then I've gotten even more into tactics games. So I want to give it another go to see if I can actually get something going, because I feel like even though that game's not, it's got its flaws, right? You know, me, I play flaw games most of the time. That's mostly yeah, what I play. That's it. okay. So, so Definitely. that's yeah. That's not something that would really uh, like sway me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But it's just it just wasn't connecting. It just wasn't connecting at the time. But that's another one where it's it was almost there. And again, if you look at it, if you if you suss it, it lines up perfectly. This you're like you would be like this is a game. This is your game. And I'd be like yeah, it is. But just wasn't hitting. I, I feel that. Um. One for me, I don't know if it is because it was an entirely different sport, but I loved NBA Street. Okay. Yes. Volume two. Besides, yes. More yes. specifically. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I played the crap out of the game. I, that was before, you know, stats. So I have no idea how many hours I put into it, but I liked it a lot. So I got NFL Street. And. I I did play it quite a bit. You know, I have the story mode or whatever. I can't remember exactly, but mm-hmm. I did not play it half as much as I did NBA Street. I'm not yeah. sure what could have changed to make me want to play it just as much, if not more. But it it was just almost there. Almost, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can, um, they're both great games. This is this is the other thing I will also say. This is another interesting thing about our list here is that you have like genuinely great games. Like like Modern Warfare 2 is a great game. NFL Street is a great game, but you're comparing them against like other great games that just hit a certain way for you. 
and those it you would seem like you're like hey any street volume two is like legit so this nfl street should come close this should be able to do and then for some reason it's like it's just not resonating and you <laughs> right, think do right. you think it's like <laughs> do you think it is like the it was mostly like the sport change that maybe. did it for you because like or maybe it, the presentation because also nba street yeah, 2's presentation is a little different, different. and yeah. the whole street was more realistic looking yeah 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 but i i loved doing tricks in nba mm-hmm. street right yeah off the heezies and stuff like that yeah in NFL Street, yeah, you could do like a spin or something, and you know, juke them out. But like, it's it just wasn't the same. It wasn't as dramatic. The tricks, the tricks yeah. weren't as dramatic looking. Yeah. And like when you did a dunk or something, you had this special move or whatever. I can't remember mm-hmm. exactly, but like it was just awesome. And it goes slow motion and put that filter on there and different stuff like that. And, yeah. yeah. And like I remember unlocking stuff in NBA Street. I don't remember lot unlocking stuff in NFL Street. I can't remember. I definitely played. Um, I played NFL Street, but I owned and played the crap out of NBA Street Volume Two. So I I can't really remember. Um, it's like yeah, it's been. Oh, I was time, 14, 13. Yeah, hour ratio for that is like fifty to one for me. Like, yeah, if I played two hours of NFL Street, I played a hundred hours in, of of NBA oh. Street Volume Two. <laughs> like it's 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 just yeah, it's out of the ballpark. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I'm trying to think like and I'm trying to I'm trying to think again to keep it in games that were near like nearly perfect, right? I don't want to do ones that were like, oh, like they like they missed the mark essentially like hundred percent or like I thought they would what they would fit and then I ended up hating it. Um so ones that were almost it. I'm trying to think if I have another one. I did have another one. Um I'm trying to make sure that. I have the right name for it. Um, oh, well, there's actually quite a bit. Okay, yeah, this other one. So we're going back to RPG. And we're not going Bethesda. We're going to the other ones that were near perfect. Actually, this is another game I want to jump back, back into and give it another chance. By all intents and purposes, we talk mm-hmm. about space shooter. We talk about mm-hmm. RPG, all these different things. Yeah. The Outer Worlds should have been it for me. The okay. Outer Worlds, which is developed by Obsidian, who I love. And Obsidian did, like, the, like, Fallout New Vegas, and they did right. a lot of the older Fallouts, like the CRPG ones, and they're great. They're they're doing Avowed, right? They're owned by Xbox, and they're doing Avowed, and I'm, I'm pumped for that, because that's going to be Elder Scrolls 5.5, to because who knows, who knows if, but the, if, who knows if Xbox will even be existing by the time Elder Scrolls 6 comes around. Right. Um, <laughs> but like, but like that game had everything and playing it, like the first thing that jumps out to me, at least Obsidian's writing is so much better. Their quest design is so much better. How they, how they work with like utilization, like utilizing, um, like charisma and dialogue options and branches and stuff like that. It's so much more and like interesting and modern and fresher, right? Like Obsidian is is doing what you want Bethesda to be doing, and um, you know Bethesda has the size and the scope. Obsidian kept theirs. It's a smaller studio, less people. They were kind of proving themselves. So the outer, you know, uh, so not the Outer Wilds, but Outer Worlds. That's a different game, the Outer Wilds. But Outer Worlds was like smaller in scope, right? But it was still such a great, unique, interesting experience. And it lines up, and it was near perfect. I think I put a good bit of uh, a good bit of time into that game. Yeah, about twelve and a half hours into into the Outer Worlds, and um, so it, it just. That should have been something that would have been either a favorite game of right. mine, like because it's a shorter game, so it wouldn't have been like in the everyday rotation, like a Starfield would. But um, yeah, that was something where I was like, man, like I like this. I just I just can't get it to connect the way I wanted to. But again, it's another one where I know I'm gonna go back and try it again because it just hit so many marks for me. Right. That's good. You know, that's good. It's just it's so close yet so far, kinda. So close yet yet so far. Like I said, I'm hoping with all of these that a Stardew thing happens, where I'm like it didn't connect, and then I go back and I'm like, oh, okay, I love this. Let me just play the crap out of it. So you right. know, that's the hope. But yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the last game I had. Do you have any other ones? I do have another one. 
Okay. Okay, so this game should hit for me, right? It, it has multiplayer. It's an FPS. Uh, it's very diverse in maps and guns, and it has a story mode, which a lot of people love, mm -hmm. right? And it kind of pushed FPS as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I just did not get it, right? And I, I did play a lot because my friends played mm. but i never really played by myself and that's halo yeah a lot of people love halo it's still a thing for you know mm -hmm. I, so you know obviously there's a huge fan base for it right and i never thought the mechanics of the game was horrible or anything but mm -hmm. just for some reason i don't know if it was like the story of halo like the I don't know the where it's placed kind yeah. of like storyboard wise, I guess. I don't know. I just, just did not click for me. I guess it's not realistic enough. Okay. I got you. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that could be the reason, you know, but what's the uh, bad guys in number three? Oh, uh, I forgot. I forgot. But yeah, just like weird aliens and stuff. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got. I guess aliens don't hit it for me, you know, because yeah. at least you know, like at Apex, you know, there's like real people and like a real scenario, and it's the Titanfall mm -hmm. world, or, you know, like The Last of Us is post-apocalyptic, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I guess stuff like that catches my eye more. But Halo, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it should have grabbed me a lot better than it did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. I was going to ask, did, have, did you ever get into, like, any of, like, the Borderlands games? I, wow, that's a good question. I actually bought the Borderlands 2 Gold Edition because I found it at GameStop for, okay. like, 15 or 20 bucks or whatever. I was hanging out with a friend. And mm -hmm. we went home and played it, and we played it for, like, five hours straight. Yeah. And I never touched it again. Yeah. Just didn't do it. I don't know. I don't know why. And I like. I liked Tiny Tina, her personality. Yeah. But that's none of another the other one. Characters clicked for me. Like that robot just kind of annoyed me. Yeah, that's another. Yeah. Supposed to. Yeah. But, yeah. What is his name? Clank or whatever. Clank, like, I don't, yeah. I don't something. Know. I don't know. I, don't uh, I forgot it. what it was. But that is another one where, in in theory, I feel like I should like that one because. Like it, it, it allows for like so many different combinations as far as like guns and weapons. Like guns for, for Borderlands, the guns are the game. That's why you play Borderlands. It's because right. of all the different guns and gun combinations you can do, and how you can set different things about it, right? And like, you know, it is like kind of like this zany world. It's 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 open worldish essentially, right? Um, and even though I think they break it up in sectors or something, but it might just be straight up so open like, world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like that's another one where it's kind of like this should click. Me and my partner were, were playing Borderlands. We, we played Borderlands three a little bit together for a while, um, and then we eventually couldn't get into that. And then we started playing like the original Gears, Definitive Edition, and then kind of lost a little bit with that too. But I just I was just wondering because like, you know, I know that you play FPSs a lot, and that seemed like that may be one in regards to like just you can get really into the guns if you want to get really focus right. in on something in regards to tweaking and tinkering and all of that, you know? Yeah, that would, you know, be the one. And it just didn't click. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know there's a huge fan base for that, you know, like they wouldn't make a movie for it that uh, flopped by the way, but mm. it, you know, they don't just pull a random IP out for that. Right. Right. So the huge fan base, there's three of them and there's offshoots. There's the tiny Tina adventures or whatever. Right. Yeah, I have that so, one. Yeah, Tiny Tina Wonderland. It obviously did well and it hit mm -hmm. well for a lot of people. Yeah. Just I I tried and it just did not click. And you're not like um you're not like really a third person shooter type of person though, right? Um third person is fine. That yeah. doesn't bother me. It just seems to be first persons are the ones I usually fall into. Yeah. I'm mostly I'm I'm a lot of a third person, and the reason I ask that is because like, like I've gotten into like the like I've obviously done the division like Division One, Division Two. I kind of prefer those and like the Ghost Recon games, right? Because they're um a bit even like the Ghost Recon games even more so than Division are more realistic, right? The 
the vision they have it where like you can shoot someone with a sniper in the head and they have certain shields and different stuff like that so they just don't go down immediately and you're like wait a minute this is a person wearing a hoodie I right. shot them in the head. They should die. <laughs> right? Wearing a hoodie. And, and it's it just kind of like disrupts your idea where Ghost Recon doesn't have that. It's very much more realistic. You shoot someone in the head, they're dead. Uh so yeah, but those those are like other other games that I would kind of play and take advantage of. That'll probably be another game that I explore too down the line would be uh the Ghost Recon breakpoint, because I have that and haven't played it yet and I want to. But um yeah, yeah, I was just wondering with that. So I mean those are the games. I don't have any other games besides that last one. Um being, yeah, I, uh, I can't. I can't think yeah. of any other ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, with that in the rear view, that brings us to final thoughts. We can offer a final thought about anything related or unrelated to the podcast episode. So, who's giving a final thought first? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Okay. So, my final thought is: Did you know? That Costco sells crack. Um, no, and it you're... comes in this bag. Cashew ah. clusters. Okay. With I almonds and pumpkin seeds. Not stop eating these things. I, I'm literally I'm gaining weight because I can't <laughs> stop eating these. These are and... way too good for their own good. Yeah. Okay. It sounds As like you... for your own good. Yeah. Do, do you have a Costco membership or anything? I I do not. I I do go to the Sam's Club. I do not have a okay, Costco. They now. they might have them. I don't know. Nope. It's Kirkland. Okay. But maybe I'll buy you a bag next time you have a little party thing. I'll bring them over. Alrighty. I I can't. They're they're way too good. They're too delicious. I I commend them. Bravo. Yeah. And that wait, and that was what it was. It's what again? It has what in it? It's like pumpkin They're seeds and Kirkland cashews. signature cashew clusters. Cashew clusters with almonds, with almonds and, pumpkin, and pumpkin, seeds. pumpkin seeds. That's yeah, that sounds dangerous. Now they like. Is it like they're sweet or is it just like a nice kind of salty balance? They yes, yes, they're salty. They're sweet. Yeah, they're, yeah. There's 95 milligrams of sodium in these things. That's only for five pieces. Okay. And they're just little. Uh, little squares yeah unless they're broken up you know but i mean here's the so thing though good. you're getting you're getting ample amounts of protein which is good it, for you you know five grams per five pieces yeah and well, i eat like 30 of them here you go so you're getting just all the protein you know yeah uh, at least what? it's kind of slightly healthy oh they're okay Cashews, almonds, cane sugar, pumpkin seed kernels, rice syrup, sea salt, and honey. I think it's mm-hmm. the sea salt, the sugar, and the honey that is driving me crazy of how yeah. good they are. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You said rice syrup, right? That's what it right. said? Yeah. It's no no high fructose corn syrup. That's – there you go. That's that's what you – you don't want that. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, that's, it's that's a, good. On the healthier side of a snack. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I will have to. I will have to search those out. I don't know. I mean, I, besides you now that I know that has a Costco membership, I don't know anybody else who may have a Costco one. But um, yeah, you know they have like their little. I'm sure they gotta have like you know Sam's has their members mark variant. They may have yep. something like that. We usually will get. Um, we usually just buy the big bags of almonds and we just eat the almonds. Oh, or man, my partner does that too. Yeah, or they have like these things called the uh, better bars, which are like um, basically kind of like your snacker, like like granola barish type of thing with like the different nuts. It's got you know, uh, I think it has like almonds in it, but it may have like chia seeds and something thing, you know, other things like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, 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 that's cool. Um, my final thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. My final thought, kind of alluded to it earlier with that whole talk about not owning games. Uh, recently, Steam had updated. When you buy games on Steam, they yep. give you a little thing that says, hey, understand you're buying a license to a game. So you don't own the game, you own a license to a game. They do the same thing. I'm not sure if people know this. When you buy um, tickets to events, especially like sporting events, 
like here, if you buy like a ticket to let's say go see U of M football, I don't know why you would, but let's say you did, or Michigan State football. I, think, I don't know why you would, but let's say you did, right? You are buying a license to the seat. You do not own the the, the ticket to the seat or the seat. And this goes for like season tickets too. If you're buying season tickets, you may think, hey, I bought a, a season tickets. I, I should have rights to this chair for the season. No, you have a right to the license to that chair for the season. Okay. Um, the contrast that so so you know Steam has this notice. GOG then added another notice on their on their front that says when you buy games here, they are DRM free, which means you own them. So that was GOG's response. Was that hey. Here, when you GOG's buy a game, man. you own a game, okay? So, uh, yeah, I, I would say that's even more of a reason to uh, go ahead and support GOG in some ways. I plan on buying some more games. I tend to default to Steam. It's easy to default to Steam, but I have a few games that I've bought through GOG, uh, Spec Ops being one of them, a couple of other strategy games being some other choices. I want to hop back in there and probably buy some other games. They throw games on sale there too. A lot of games you can find on Steam, you can find on GOG as well. It's not like a thing of where it's like only Steam or, you know what I'm saying? And I think it kind of gets lost in the shuffle sometimes with Steam and then the Epic Store because, you know, Epic owns the Epic Store. Um, right. But yeah, don't forget about GOG. You remember GOG is ran by CD Projekt Red. That's their distribution service. So, you know, um, definitely go there and check it out and see what deals they have because they've run specials and deals too. Um, yeah, and they, they, have, they have a lot of older stuff. That's where I got they do have a lot of, Kingdoms. Yeah, they do have a lot of older stuff. And again, you buy it, you own it. So, you know, you're buying it only those older games that run on newer platforms. So it works for everyone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's my final thought, though, which leads us to the end of level 120 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, please like, follow, and share the podcast on your socials and on your preferred podcast service. We're on Apple and YouTube and Spotify and everywhere else, okay? And then as far as the socials, you know, we got our Facebook, we've got our Instagram, our TikTok, um, uh, X, Twitter, I don't know if I said that already. But then, of course, we have uh, our YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. Um, also, if you want to support us, there's a couple ways you can do that. One buying the merch from our Teespring store. We've got phone cases, hats, shirts, different stuff like that. Another way, we have a Patreon. You want to subscribe to us there. We've got three tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier, each offering uh, little bits of goodies. Um, you get um, early notices of when the podcast drops. So, you know, you get, you know, I think it's like an hour or a couple of hours earlier notice of when the podcast is live. So you can view it first. Uh, as well as a, uh, a bunch of other different goodies and bits and exclusive content there. So you can check us out there if you want to support us. Uh, but that is it for me. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Please. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>